We have Graham, guitarist from Blur, with us to talk about the record. Although it's only a year, you seem to spend quite a long time in the studio between Modern Life is Rubbish, because you went back in the studio quite quickly to do this new record. Yeah, well, we'd been touring the last one quite extensively, even sort of before it was released. We haven't had any holidays, so we came directly off tour straight into the studio. Because there was such a long time between the first and second, we didn't want that kind of uncomfortable period of time to, to be looming around again. So we wanted to be quick about putting out another. What was the difference, though, starting on this record? I mean, were you so much more confident after Modern Life is Rubbish? Yeah, and we had a lot of stuff demoed as well that we were quite pleased with and quite eager to get on with. Because of our team we've, we've sort of got now, with our engineer and Stephen Street, that was like a sort of a honeymoon for them. Mm. Working together, Modern Life is Rubbish, but um, working on this one there seemed to be a much more comfortable process for those two. Because of that, th I think the sounds are much more together. Mm. Was it an enjoyable experience then? Yeah, it was, it was quite, it was difficult though, but you know, no pain, no gain and all that. But how was it difficult then? Because we knew it had to be better than Modern Life is Rubbish and we had it in our heads that it was a difficult act to follow. Do you think your, um, your influences were coming through more on this album? Perhaps. I mean, yeah, there's, there's a, a few giggles, a few little jokes in there. I don't know, a lot of references to certainly people that I really like, like Serge Gainsbourg and To The End and Francoise Hardy and people like that. So what tracks did you particularly enjoy playing in the studio? End of a Century, I like, because of the little country and western bit right at the end. It's, it's weird when you actually create something that you, you have to live with for a long time and it can actually have some emotional effect on you after plugging away with it for months. It's quite, quite remarkable. It's never really happened before. But it does on tracks like This Is A Low and, you know, the soppy ones. Why did you take up drums? Well, really, the reason was because well, I, I come from Colchester, which is a big military town, and uh, I really liked the pipe and drum bands. <laughs> I have a lot of in <laughs> Colchester. So I started off playing the bagpipes. I was about 10 at the time. But I didn't have the lungs to blow the bag up. <laughs> really? Is that <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely true. You're not spinning me a yarn. Not really, no. I mean, I, I actually had bagpipe lessons for about six months, and the teacher said, well, if you ever manage to blow the bag up, I'll buy you a pint. Six months later, I still couldn't do it. Really? He bought me a pint, though. That's how I... Commissary. <laughs> But you wanted to be noisy, obviously. Was there anything in between bagpipes and drums? An experiment with violins or anything? <laughs> no, because I've played in all sorts of things, orchestras and brass bands and that kind of thing. I've, I've had lessons on quite a few instruments, but never really done anything else seriously. Did you all know each other from Colchester then? Is that well, Graham and Damon knew each other from Colchester, but I didn't meet Damon until I was about, I don't know, 18, 19. Um, what did you think of him the first time you met him? I thought, what a ponce. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was all right. I mean, we met in my local pub, and uh, you tend to get on well with people in your local pub, don't you? We played in a band together, actually. He played saxophone. Mm. Do you think that the great bits about Blur have taken quite a long time to come out? Because some of the stuff on um, probably Modern Life and Park Life, to a certain extent, are more like Seymour, the pre-Blur band. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was uh, something we definitely wanted to do. Once um, Leisure was out, pretty quickly we weren't really all that happy with it and we weren't really happy with the direction we were going like that. So um, pretty soon after that we made a conscious decision that that was as far as we were going to go in that direction and uh, started regressing a bit and then moving forward again. Because the strange thing as well was that there was this difference between Blur the records and Blur live because I think a lot of people were actually amazed when they went along to see Blur <laughs> pretty quickly after Leisure and just before pop scene and things where they'd been listening to the records which were one thing and they went along and they got this awesome punk band almost in their face, <laughs> you know, being just generally noisy. Yeah, we like to kick up a racket. Do they get bored with your sound checks when you gig? Uh, I don't know, you'd have to ask them that. Probably not. Probably Very not. Quick. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? You're not a drummer who sits there just going with the snare no, for about no. five minutes. No. Get all the roadies to do that, I can't be bothered. <laughs> take about 10-15 minutes, you know, we turn up, all the monitors are set, we turn up, play through a song, sold off again. What are your favourite tracks of this album? Well, London Loves is one of them. It's kind of my bag, really. Any particular reason? Though? Just because of the kind of talking heads, can, Adrian Ballou, Robert Fripp kind of thing, that's kind of what I grew up listening to. I'm all 